Uh, welcome to this hashtag PS in 30 Photoshop tutorial where the idea is that we have a Photoshop tutorial in about 30 seconds. It never works out that way. And today we're going to take a look at the dodge tool. Actually, you know what? We'll take a look at the dodge and burn tool and talk about how we dodge and burn a little bit in Photoshop. So both tools are virtually identical, as you can see up here in the toolbar. They have the exact same options. Um, the dodge tool, if you see here, uh, when I paint with it, I brighten parts of the image. And the burn tool, when I paint with it, I darken bits of the image. All right, I'm going to undo that stuff because I don't want to dodge and burn that way. Um, with these tools, obviously you can choose any brush you like. You got all your normal brush settings, size, hardness, choose any brush, load any brush you want. It's all great. You can choose midtones, shadows. It's just generally going to help you dodge in the shadowy parts of the image um, a little bit better. Well, it's not doing anything because I need to be on the mountains layer. But you can see it's just going to do a better job than if I have it set to like highlights and come down here and try to paint where you're going to see not much of anything. But then up here on highlights, you see something. Um, that being said, you don't really need to change the range if you absolutely don't want to. For the most part, I use midtones, and the reason is because of the way that I dodge and burn, and I'm going to show you that in just a second. You also have exposure options. The higher you set the exposure, the more powerful the effect is going to be. Um, so if we reduce exposure, actually, you can reduce and set the exposure to any number you want just by hitting a number on your keyboard. So let's say we want 25, hit the numbers 2 and 5 in rapid succession, boom, an exposure of 25, and the exposure, or the dodge brush, excuse me, uh, has been weakened quite a bit, so we have more control over it, so that's great. I hit zero, it brings us right back to 100. We also can protect tones, which basically is going to keep your image from getting completely washed out uh, and, and losing contrast, becoming solid white, things like that. Just as a general principle, I usually always keep that checked on, and the same goes here for the burn tool. So let's talk about dodging and burning. You can dodge and burn not only portraits, as we have here, this guy in front of these mountains, but you can also dodge and burn landscape photos, product photos, anything like that. Um, there's really no limit to what you can dodge or burn, although a lot of dodging and burning you're seeing nowadays, at least, is done on portrait photography. Here's how I like to dodge and burn. Create a new layer, blank layer. We can name this D and B for dodge and burn, and then we're going to go edit, fill, and we're going to choose to fill this layer with the contents of 50% gray, so just boom, solid gray, and we're going to set this layer to the blend mode of soft light. Now here's one of the reasons why I keep my dodge and burn tool set at midtones, because I'm just painting an exact middle gray, or dodging and burning over an exact middle gray, because the layer is set to the blend mode of soft light, exact middle gray gets dropped out, and the only thing that's going to be saved are bits that are brighter or darker. Now check this out. So I'm dodging, I'm just building up this highlight on his forehead. What if I want to darken something? Well, instead of having to go and hunt for the burn tool or you know take the time to move my mouse across screen, which can be very um, annoying and take a lot of time, especially if you're dodging and burning a big image and you're going back and forth and back and forth and back and forth, you can just hold down the Alt or Option key and that switches the dodge burn, uh, the dodge tool, excuse me, to the burn tool. So it becomes a bit of a dodge burn tool. So here I'm dodging and here I'm I'm burning and I'm, I'm burning just I'm holding down the alter option key boom and then I let go of it I'm back to dodging so I can add some light to the tie now holding down the alter option key I can darken up around the tie and around the collar just kind of following the natural highlights and shadows that I see here uh, in the photo now of course I can shut the guy off and I can focus on the mountains layer um, because like I said you don't only need to work on portrait photography when you're dodging and burning you can kind of dodge and burn any type of photo that you're looking to add depth and detail and drama uh, into so just like that we can go ahead and add some drama to the background as well turn the guy back on and you can see there's before our dodging and burning there's after our dodging and burning we would probably want to make sure that we're not painting over him I'm not going to change that now that I've done it but you can see before after dodging and burning and of course because it's on its own layer you can get rid of it anytime you want or you can just reduce the opacity um, just so maybe the effect isn't quite so uh, so darn powerful before after a little dodging and burning how I like to dodge and burn in Photoshop and most importantly for the dodge and burn tool in Photoshop that's it get it got it good NathanielDodsonTutvid.com. I'll catch you in the next one.